Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing the upcoming fights at UFC 302. The first fight in particular that I'm going to be discussing, there will be two separate videos for this, but the first fight I'm going to discuss in this video is Paulo Costa versus Sean Strickland. Now, before I break down the fighters and how their styles match up with each other and who I think is going to win, I'm going to, you know, sort of talk about my overall thoughts about the fight and if I think this is good matchmaking, if I think it's, you know, worth being on a pay-per-view. I think it's worth being on a pay-per-view, yes. I think that, you know, Sean Strickland is the number one contender right now. I mean, he just lost to Drikas Duplessis. I thought he arguably won that fight, but... I mean, either way, you know, it was a razor close fight. It could have gone to either person. Um, but Paulo Costa, I mean, I get he was in the uh, co-main event on UFC uh, 298. But the thing is about Paulo Costa, I really don't think he's that good as a fighter. Um, but, I mean, I guess, you know, it, it's a fun matchup. I don't hate the fight. I think it's, you know getting a little bit too much hype for what it is, but I do not hate the fight whatsoever at all, and I do, you know, I, I will get excited for this fight. Now, who do I think is going to win this fight? I do believe that, you know, this fight's extremely one-sided, in my opinion. I do believe that, you know, Paulo Costa, he's okay. Um, he's coming off of that loss to Robert Whitaker, and before that, he hadn't fought since 2022 against Luke Rockhold, who he couldn't even finish. I mean, going to a, a decision with Luke Rockhold in 2022 is a disgrace. I mean, and then he had several canceled bouts. And I mean, that that wasn't necessarily his fault per se, but I do think, you know, Paulo Costa, you know, he's getting up at, up there in age. He's, uh, he's 32, so not super old, but he just, if he, he feels like he's getting slower every single time I see him fight. He's, I mean, just not fast at all. I mean, he's he's kind of weighed down, you know. He's obviously on roids, retaining every ounce of fluid in his body. So I do think that, you know, Paulo Costa, I mean, the dude's just going down a hill. I was surprised he even got the fight against Robert Whitaker. I'm surprised he made it to the night of the fight with Robert Whitaker. So I do think, you know, he will actually show up to the fight this time. But Paulo Costa, 14-3, and three, um... You know, obviously a little bit bigger than Sean Strickland, although I do believe Sean Strickland has a slight reach advantage. Yes, he does. He actually has a massive reach advantage. He has four-inch reach advantage. Um, but, you know, in my opinion, I think Sean Strickland's going to beat him in every, you know, facet of the fight. I mean, I don't see Paulo Costa trying to go out there and take down Sean Strickland. And even if he does, Sean Strickland has amazing takedown defense. So, I mean... <sighs> But could Paulo Costa go out there and try to just shear Mass Strickland out of the ground? Sure, but I don't think that's necessarily even the best path to victory for him. I think Strickland will get back up. Um, and in the striking, I mean, Strickland's just much more technical. I feel like he's going to use the jab pretty much and, you know, the leg kicks and the teeps to the body to win the entire fight. I mean, I think he's going to shut down Paulo Costa on the feet. I don't think Paulo Costa is going to be able to go anywhere on the feet. And, you know, maybe he lands a big bomb here or there. But, I mean, Paulo Costa's power is overrated. I mean, he's not really even KOing anyone anymore. He couldn't KO Robert Whitaker with a flush head kick. So, I mean, I think, you know, Sean Strickland has proven to be fairly durable in his career thus far, except for his fight against uh, Alex Pereira. But his career recently has been pretty impressive. You know, since that loss to Alex Pereira, he split decision loss to Jared Cannonier, which I actually thought he won that fight again. Seems to be a theme with Strickland fights. Razor close decision. Either guy could have won. I don't really have a complaint about that fight. Even though I did score it for Sean Strickland. Um, after that, beat Nasruddin Amavov by decision. Uh, KO'd Abus Magomedov in the second round. Abus Magomedov's a bum. And then, uh, you know, decisive decision win against Israel Adesanya. As well as, you know, his most recent loss, which we already discussed. So... You know, how do I think this fight's going to play out? I've discussed it a little bit already, but let's break it down a little bit more. I believe the first round is going to be very slow. I believe the first couple rounds actually are going to be very slow. I believe these guys are just going to be kind of going jab for jab. 
Um, Paulo Costa has a decent jab, not the best jab in the world, not like Sean Strickland's jab. I think Paulo Costa is going to be trying to set up some big power shots. I believe that he's going to be throwing some leg kicks. I believe Sean Strickland will too. And I believe the first two rounds are going to be fairly even with Sean Strickland just barely edging him out. I'm predicting a 50-45 for Sean Strickland in this fight. Um, but I think Sean Strickland's going to overwhelm Paulo Costa with Valium. I think Sean Strickland is going to, you know, chop the legs and keep to the body of uh, Paulo Costa and use that reach advantage on Paulo Costa. And I do believe that this could be, you know, just another, you know, downslide for part of Paulo Costa's downslide. Um, I'm not quite sure why they made this fight. I feel like there's a lot of better fights you could have made. I would have preferred to see Strickland versus Whitaker or someone higher up in the ranking is at the very least. But, um, you know, I'm not complaining. It is a good fight. But overall, this card is a little bit underwhelming. You know, UFC 302, you have uh, Islam Makachev versus Dustin Poirier. And then you have um, Paulo Costa versus Sean Strickland. That's the main event and co-main event, both of which I feel are fairly one-sided. You know, I think Islam Makachev is going to steamroll uh, Dustin Poirier. But... I'm going to tell you why I think they made this matchup. I believe they made this matchup because for some reason, whatever reason in hell, they believe that Paulo Costa can beat Sean Strickland. And Sean Strickland has been bitching and moaning about the UFC recently. He's been saying, I'm going to leave the UFC. I'm never going to fight for you guys again if I don't get my my uh, rematch with Drikas Duplessis because, you know, oh, you know, I, I won that fight. It, I mean... The dude has went from ridiculing anyone for crying to being the biggest crybaby in the UFC. It's super ironic. It's so annoying. I'm very tired of Sean Strickland's antics. I mean, I used to be a fan of Sean Strickland, and now he's just turned me into someone who just... I mean, he's just distasteful. I've said that in so many videos where I talk about Sean Strickland. He's just distasteful, in my opinion. I don't like his antics in general. Um... You know, I was happy to see, you know, him get the belt and, you know, I was happy to see him, you know, have a good like story moment where he was reaching out to people who have struggled with domestic abuse like he has. But in my overall opinion, I do think that Sean Strickland was given this fight because the UFC are trying to set him up for failure. And if he wins this fight, I believe the UFC are going to try to pick out what they believe to be a tough stylistic matchup because I don't think they want Sean Strickland getting his belt back. Sean Strickland is a champ is a media hazard. I mean, back when Sean Strickland was fighting in the Apex every fight and, you know, he was saying all these outrageous things, they were just kind of secluded to just this little MMA community, right? But now that, you know, he's had that exposure of being a champion and so on and so on, um, I believe that, you know, he's gotten a lot more, you know, people from the UFC trying to censor him. He said that himself. He's, I mean, he's slipped up a couple times on stage saying, you know, I told you, I know I wasn't supposed to say that. Is it okay that I said that guy is kind of joking around? But I don't believe you should be able to tell anyone what they should or shouldn't do or should or shouldn't say. But, you know, Sean Strickland is a media hazard, and I do believe he's very controversial. So I believe the UFC is trying to set Sean Strickland up for success. Let me know if you guys agree with me. Um, other than that, Sean Strickland, you know, kind of a bit of a decision merchant. I don't expect this to be a very exciting fight. So that's why I'm a little bit disappointed that this is the co-main event. Sure, is it a high level of uh, co-main event? Yes. Are both guys ranked? Yes. Are both guys? Is it you know somewhat relevant to the division? Yes. But in my opinion, there's so many better matchups you could have done. Maybe I'll make a video about you know different matchups you could have made for Sean Strickland because you know in my opinion this is just a blunder on the matchmaking side of the UFC. And you know to be quite honest with you. I believe that Sean Strickland is one of the most overrated fighters in the UFC. He has incredible defense. He has a very good jab. He has good teeth to the body, and he has decent leg kicks. That's it. He has good fundamentals, but most of the time, if you find a way around one of his biggest weapons, which is his jab, or, you know, you, you have great wrestling, I think Sean Strickland is extremely overrated. People saw him beat Israel Adesanya convincingly, I mean, most people just saw that one clip from the first round and just imagined that he brutalized Israel Adesanya. It was a competitive fight. Sean Strickland won convincingly, but people act like that was a complete domination. It was not a complete domination by any means whatsoever. I mean, Sean Strickland, you know, he went out there, 
he won, I think, four out of five rounds, but it was each round was pretty close outside of the first round. So I do think, you know, people are rating Sean Strickland extremely highly. I think he wins this fight easily due to the stylistic matchup. But, you know, Sean Strickland doing all his bitching and moaning, I guess it did work after all. The UFC is definitely paying him, you know, at least a little bit more because he was saying, I'm not going to fight Paulo Costa for you know, less than 200k show, less than 200k win, guys. Come on, here's the thing, you guys. So I do believe that, you know, Sean Strickland, I mean, good on him. He's getting paid what he wants to be paid for this fight, I guess. But I do think if he wins, he's just going to start going back to clamoring for a title shot. And, you know, the logic that he's using for saying that he deserves a title shot is completely ridiculous because if we gave every, he said, that if you don't get knocked out as a champion or beaten for five rounds, that you don't deserve to lose your belt. In in that case, Israel make Israel Adesanya the champion again. Let's go back in time and, you know, give Anderson Silva a title shot, an undeserved title shot. Sean Strickland does not deserve a title shot, but all of the Sean Strickland sycophants are just begging and, you know, bitching and moaning and trying to get in the UFC's ears and just be a pain in their ass until Sean Strickland gets another title shot. And it's completely disgraceful. I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of, you know, Sean Strickland being everywhere online saying, you know, I, I beat Drikas, wah, wah, you know, just go cry, buddy. You know, go get on Theo, Theo Vaughn's podcast again and go sob your heart out. You know, Sean Strickland, I'm sorry. Shouldn't have gotten so personal there. But seriously, this guy's annoying the shit out of me recently. Let me know if you guys feel the same way down below or if you completely disagree with me. Tell me why. I am very interested to hear. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you do enjoy the video, please give me a thumbs up as it does very much help the channel. And if you want more content like this, hit the subscribe button. Hit the post notifications button so you never miss a video. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.